Good luck. All right, so um, let's open with Central Farouk today because we haven't had enough suffering lately. Just kidding, but um, Central Farouk is a fun opening to use and can lead to some very exciting games. Um, but also I'm trying to copy moves that I saw this morning. Um, so that's exciting. Um, sure, I guess. All right, uh, and then Shogi Harbor played the silver, I think. It doesn't make sense in this position. In that other position, it would make some sense, but here I have to do something more like this. Closing the diagonal is tempting because there are so many fireworks going off here. Um, but this is the way we tend to play. Uh, my king and rook are right next to each other, just asking for um, something very exciting to happen. Eh, it'll be fine. Sure, let's stick the powder keg next to the fireworks. What could possibly go wrong? All right, so I have defended the very important 5-5 five five point, and I'm not moving my pawn off of 5-6 until somehow I know that it's safe. All right, so... Because I don't know it to be safe to move my pawn off of 5 6, it's just going to sit there for a while. I've got lots and lots of squares defended. Their rook can temporarily do something exciting. Actually, if they take this pawn, I have a bishop drop. That makes this game more interesting. So, possibly already we might have seen an overplay. Now, if I try to hold on to this pawn, that could be a problem, too. Um, but yeah, the idea of forking the rook in this pawn and that pawn looks interesting. So we're playing our old friend GLGR here. Uh, we've had some exciting weeks and games past. Uh, games and weeks past, rather. Seems like we're always trying to checkmate each other right in the opening. Um, I'm trying to keep things fresh and original every single time we play, so this time we're playing Central Farouk. Um, so, it's something different. Alright, so I can Nifu to protect my pawn. That would not be the best move. Uh, I could block their bishop. They set this up on purpose, but, um, hmm. Hmm, indeed. Why would this, I mean, blocking their bishop, rook takes pawn, threatens to take the pawn over here, and then has no follow-up threat. Um... Yeah, no, blocking the bishop has to be the correct move. It's just such a good move here. Um, because after they take your I drop my bishop, the bishop's going to attack the base of their bishop. Um, so yeah, we need to limit the scope of this bishop and then start using the rest of our pieces. And now, since rook takes pawn is such a lemon, um, I'm wondering what they've planned here. No, this is not accurate. Uh, this, it will lead to an exciting position, but um, I think it's more exciting than my opponent anticipated. 
I'm just going to let their rook roam free over here on the left side of the board. Which usually would terrify me, but here, I think I'm entirely fine with it. I dominate 5-5. Five five. I'm going to promote my bishop right next to their king. Um, I mean, and my king gets to run away to safety while theirs is hemmed in the center, and my rook and bishop and pawn are all attacking. Uh, and I'm threatening the knight as well as the bishop as well as trying to checkmate the king. So... I don't think that this is what they had dreamed of. This looks just so extremely strong for me. So... Um, we'll see what they have planned here. I might have dismissed this out of hand too eagerly, but it, this looks very strong on its face. And I'm curious how this will go. So now I have a discovery against their king when I move my bishop. Uh, the rook is the only piece defending their bishop, so we have a pin in effect. We have a uh, discovered attack on their king. We've got like all the tactics working in our favor here. The only downside is if they take our lance, um, then I might get a lance to the face of my rook when I check the king and take the rook for free, but that's easily countered by putting a pawn in front of the lance. Um, I think maybe we got a bit too excited this game. Yeah, when I saw my promoted bishop attacking their bishop um, and lines starting to open right in front of the king, uh, that was enough to convince me that I didn't need to read further, that this would be an interesting game for me. Um, even if I manage to lose this, it's still interesting. But also, this very much looks like I don't even see a move for him. It's pretty bad. I guess uh, they could try moving the rook one way or the other to escape checks, but I don't think that works either. Um, like, if they move the rook closer to the bishop, I just step my bishop backward, forking their rook and bishop. If they move it to the side, uh, my pawns can pursue the rook. If they move it off the rank, then the bishop just hangs. I guess the only thing that's reasonable is trying to block the center file. But I don't think that... Well, I should read it out before discounting it entirely. Um, but yeah, pawn there seems to be the only move here. And if they pawn drop down the rook's head, I think my rook just takes it. But, um, I mean, maybe there's complications that force me to do bishop takes rook instead. Actually, well, yeah, bishop takes rook, rook pawn takes rook would be check. So, yeah, I, I have to do rook takes pawn, and they drop the other pawn, and I do rook takes pawn again. So, I'm just winning a piece in broad daylight here. 
with a devastating attack to follow. Um, yep, this has to be tried, but it does not succeed. And I guess the best they get out of this is just they do get to promote their bishop and take a silver. Um, but I'm split between taking the uh, abandoned rook in the center of the board versus doing this discovery and taking the promoted bishop and then going back to pursue the rook again. Yeah. Exciting game. Um, surprise. Yeah, I think we were both surprised by this one. <laughs> Alright, um... So, what do we do to fill the video so it doesn't... Nobody knows what's going to happen. Um, right, so I think you have to try this here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think... Even here, I still have the same idea. Okay, so that's check. So I have to respond to this check. Um, and now their bishop is still hanging, and I have a rook in hand, and so we check their king. Yeah. <laughs> this reminds me a bit of that uh, Road to Shodan uh, video. Uh, yeah, the king in the center is a sitting duck. <laughs> um... All right, so I mean, yeah, that might potentially make this a bit more interesting. Um, you might have a point there. Ah, uh, your king is in the center. Uh. Either attack better or try defending. <laughs> I think that's the reality here. Uh, yeah. Got a point with the silver drop. Um, Yeah. Yeah, I am greedy here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. So... This is just the way to go here. Yeah. Uh, I guess I should suggest, uh, can we analyze from the beginning? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm curious uh, what else is going on, but... Yeah. So good. Uh, yeah. On three six, uh, 
might be overplaying. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so. Right. After pawn 5, 5, 5, I'm much stronger. So there's. Uh, I mean, what can you do? You didn't see pawn 5, 5. Um, so. Yeah, I think that's just what ended up deciding this. Uh, that and just the tactics that followed. Yeah. Even bishop 2-8 is good. Oh. Ah. Uh, true enough. I hadn't even looked at bishop 2-8, because usually... I never have the opportunity to do bishop 2 8 in the opening. My king's always on 2 8. Um, but yeah, that makes sense. Kind of looks like a boat castle if I've done that. But yeah, at this point, that's just game. Or not really, but this is. Um, Senta is very much advantageous here. Um. You could try to make it interesting, but, uh, yeah. Surprise. <laughs> so, the bishop drop and the rook capture might have been, uh, well, ah, so when I played pawn 5-5, five five, I saw that, um. Otherwise, I might have played uh, some other defensive move. Um, yeah, you have to give some thought to your king and understand that your opponent might do the same. Uh, so you just missed it. Um, well... I guess I've been there overlooking major tactics with my king exposed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here I am simply confused. Uh, But maybe I am better. Um, yeah, it just seemed makes sense. You haven't castled yet, so I should be better. There might be some, maybe I have a tactic, I don't know, uh, to look, but it's possible I might have a, well, how about, how about here, um, is this playable? Or am I just getting reamed here for some reason that I just, haven't seen yet. Yeah. Uh, Road to Shodan. Episode 1. Weak King Falls Easily. <laughs> yeah. You have to defend that stuff. Um, and here I was thinking this. Um, oh, well, this is interesting. Uh, so maybe I have to do something crazy instead. Yeah. Yeah, because that otherwise is kind of scary. 
Um, and then I'm just up upon Road to Shodan is an excellent YouTube series released by women's shogi professional uh, who goes by the name of Shogi Harbor. Um, and she, in collaboration with Wojtek, uh, explain some games between amateur players and explain the principles of just what players should look for during a game. Um, so yeah, you can find uh, Road to Shodan on YouTube. Uh, I'd highly recommend it. So I'm watching out for my opponent's threat, which is this night check. And apparently the only way I can stop the knight check and also, like, not lose the pawn defending my king. Um, other than advancing my rook, and I don't want to do that yet, the only way I can do that is just shuffle the king over. Um, this is a highly unusual castle, but, you know, if it works, it works. So I am up a pawn... But more importantly, my opponent has no pawn in hand. For them to start attacking, they'll have to get a pawn into their hand, which will give me some time to build up some kind of a defense. Um... So I'm trying to be careful to give all my pieces all the breathing room they need uh, to coexist with each other, or to coexist happily with each other. Um, so now, oh, my silver's overworked. Oh, this is funny. YOLO! <laughs> uh... Uh, I wonder just how sound this is. Yeah, Carolina. Uh, so, hmm. This is pretty funny. Uh, I guess I'm about to get a second pawn in hand and everything's under control. This is... An interesting variation, but perhaps gratuitous on my part. I was asking how are we can manage to fill the rest of this video so people watching it won't know just off the bat that it's immediately over. But um, yeah, we found a way to generate some content. Let's go us. But yeah, since they don't have any of their generals attacking... And this pawn shuts down their rook, and my silver covers some very key squares here. Um, and their bishop blocks their rook, and I control 5-5 five five with my rook and bishop. This is going to take some work on their part for them to find an advantage. Also, I'm threatening a pawn drop and then promotion, forking the rook and bishop. Um... So I'm threatening this. Um, somehow my king has survived this and my king's attacking their knight. And I just have like every square covered twice. It's just magical. Um... Usually the defense is not this well crafted, but in this case, um, they haven't got four pieces attacking. Getting a fourth piece into this attack um, 
would give it better chances. There is a saying in Shogi, a proverb rather, that if you have four pieces, your attack uh, never runs out. Um, and so, right, this is testing that theory. They have like a rook and a pawn and a knight. And if only this last pawn could usefully enter the attack, they might have something here. Um, so yeah, we're going to see this pawn promote, and then another pawn enter behind it, and I don't know. My king's in an exciting spot. Yeah. So the attack is just slightly premature here. When I can play my king all the way up to 4-6 and nothing's gone wrong, you, something's going on. Uh, didn't expect this, but here we are. All my pawns defend my king somehow. Um... So, and I guess attacking as Gota is tricky as the second player. Um, Alright, um, my silver is attacked. Can I just defend it like this? Maybe not. Maybe this is um, hmm. maybe this is too suspect. All right, let's get this king moving. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. Uh, I have pushed the envelope way too far here, but here we are. Okay. There is no need for me to play this aggressively here. But it sure is fun. Uh, it's completely uncalled for, but I've trapped their bishop. Sort of. Their bishop prevents the pawn from attacking my king. Truthfully, I'd rather just retreat my king, but um, that's not possible while this pawn is hanging. And the only way to defend this pawn is to put the knight in front of it. Because if I move the rook over, this pawn promotes and hits my rook. This pawn promotes anyway. Um, so, two can play that game. He is threatening to retreat his token and then, like, drop the silver here. Which could lead to a fun game. Um, yeah, his attack is just slightly too slow. In all of the funniest ways. He's so excited about the possibility of attacking my king, but um, this is possibly the funniest way to refute an attack. This with um, in like kind. All right, let's hit the rook. Why not? Nothing else in this game makes sense. Why should this move make any sense?
I wonder if I could get my king to promote somehow. Like, get it where the lance is. That would be an interesting challenge. My main point here was that I was just trying to get the rook to move away from this pawn and knight. But, um, maybe that's not within my reach. Alright, so now they're getting pretty close to almost threatening to take my pawn. Um, I honestly have no idea how to continue here. It feels like there should be some attacking move at my disposal, but I don't know what. If I bring the rook up, uh, they can drop a bishop or a silver, and then I take their token and things get crazy. Um, yeah, it's just hard to play this position. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. I might be overplaying here. Uh, be overplaying a lot. But, uh... I guess the logical thing to do is that. If there can be any logic in this position. So the idea is that I promote and just start, like, vacate the corner and move my king in. Um, <laughs> Coco Coco how Coco dem left. There's another player who goes by the name of Coco Lemon. The Kuko Dem is the one who left this position. Ah, right. That does change this dynamic a bit. Um. So. Not sure how much. But yeah, I th perhaps I've overplayed. Um, yeah. This would have been a really silly game to have. The knight drop on my part is gratuitous, but it just like looked way too exciting. Yeah. I guess Gota is better here. Uh Uh, it'd be nice if I could escape into the corner. It's just not in reach here. So close. So, so, so close, but not quite there. It would have been there if he did something crazy like Silver takes pawn, but, uh, so, yeah, we'd have to, I don't know, not sure what to look at. <laughs> yeah, we'll see if you castle next time. We'll see. There's a reason this game. <laughs> At least if you are built to. <laughs> Try. You might want to try harder. Other players somehow managed to castle. 
Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Ah. Well, that was exciting. Short-lived, but, you know, we'll take it. I mean, it's Sunday. Who wants a workout on Sunday, anyhow? I mean, it was a bit of a workout to figure out the couple very important tactics in the game. But having figured those out, um, this game quickly got decided. So, what can you do? That's why we play the teaching ladder. So, um, this, again, is organized. <laughs> Uh, it helps being a top seed. Yeah, so GLGR organizes the tournament, runs on a weekly basis every weekend, or rather, we try to schedule them on the weekend, but the round can extend all the way throughout the week if players need extensions. They just ask the tournament director, but, um, yeah. This um, uh, it's a great opportunity to play players that are within like plus or minus two hundred points of your rating, unless you're extremely low rated or extremely high rated. So, and this is open to everyone. Yeah. Well, I'm still reading uh, Katagami's uh, Suma book. I think it helps, uh, yeah. Yeah, just knowing which shapes of pieces mate and which ones don't is kind of important. Um, I'm overstating the claim here just to make the dramatic point that, yeah, reading, doing things outside of just playing can help. Um, so, yeah, the Shogi Wars training counts for something. But I would not give it credit for this. Because we've only played, I think, like 12 ish games on Shogi Wars. Yeah. Anyhow, um, yeah, this is an exciting little adventure here. Um, so thanks to everyone for enjoying this analysis. And we'll see you at the next Teaching Ladder game.